So, uh, I want to talk to you today about Nix as a solution to embedded Linux. But really, the talk should have been called Fearless Hacking. Who wants fearless hacking? Yeah, we all want fearless hacking. So, Embedded Linux is a specialized version of the Linux operating system tailored to run on compact, resource-constrained devices with dedicated functions such as routers, smart TVs, and industrial controllers. This is a definition I found on the Wikipedia page, but I think it was missing synthesizers. Um, uh, so my name is Ole, and I run this company called Genki, and we make uh, products like this one. That's a ring that you that you can use to change uh, sound and effects using your using movement. Some other uh, synthesizer gear, and lately we've been working on this new uh, device called Katla. And uh, Katla is running NixOS. <laughs> And it sounds something like this. Yeah, so it's like a chaotic synthesizer with five voice, and as you will see, very intricate uh, software and hardware kind of combination. Um, it's made particularly for people that are writing, you know, film scores or doing very kind of uh, producers that are making very high quality uh, kind of uh, yeah film score music and like experimental music. Um, but before we continue, and I'm going to tell you all about the hardware that's inside, how we made this happen with a, such a small team, I want to mention some caveats. Like, I don't think there's a silver bullet for Nix uh, embedded uh, development at all. I think it really depends on the size of the team. We are very few, so we have to be very clever about the technologies that we choose to develop these kind of products. And um, uh, uh, yes, who was at my talk uh, last year? Yeah, a couple of hands. Okay, so then you might be might know what's coming next, because before we continue, I wanted to take to uh, pay homage to the la last the Nixcon, and do a little bit of stretching because we've been sitting all day, and I want to have you all stretch before we continue. Okay, so everybody stand up, and we're gonna follow my lead from the year before, and do some light stretching. <laughs> all right, are you ready? So just follow my lead. Just do like this. Okay, Tilt so we start to, the, to your right. To the left, and then we can do some swirls like this. Just getting it, getting the body awake. We have to remember we also have a body. And then the other side, like this. All right, you're doing great. Bend the hands, your right hand forward, and you can tap it like that. Many of you have a carpal tunnel. <laughs> No, no, not now. <laughs> and then like this. Right, and then the left hand. Like this. How much do we got left? Yeah, we have 45 seconds, no worries. And then here. And then now is for the, those of you that stand close to each other, we do like this. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> and just like this. And then to the, your left. Uh, just as long, just as far as you want, or your body allows you today. Then uh, a little bit further up, nice. And then the other way. Okay. Okay, and let's just drop it a bit. All right. How are you feeling now? Yeah. Great. Good. Nice. Great job, everyone. All right. 
<laughs> great. How are you feeling? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, you need to remember we all have a body. We need to exercise it and care for it sometimes. But anyways, now I'm going to go really quick. I only have 14 minutes left, so I'll go quickly through it. We are all kind of balanced, ready to go. So the hardware of Katla consists of main three parts. We have the front panel. That's an ARM Cortex-M4 controller. Uh, that's kind of uh, handles all the knobs and buttons. It looks something like this on the hardware. So all the buttons there, the filter, the knobs. Then we have the motherboard. And the motherboard is the brains of the operations. There we have a Ratsa CM5 chip. That's the main chip of our board. It's a Rock chip RK3588 chip. And then the audio is, these are basically analog components. We have the 32-channel uh, high-speed audio uh, codec over here that spits it out to, a, to 32 channels of DAC that then goes into controlling uh, basically the filter, wave filter, uh, mixer, and distortion. And this is all controlled in CV through this very powerful uh, uh, CM4 chip. The software and infrastructure, the front panel is written in assembly. That's like Rust Async for Embedded, so we can like just make leverage of all the niceties of the borrow checker and the async await stuff in Rust. Uh, the communications is also written in Rust, so it's like basically these Rust macros behind the scenes that define you know, the padding and all the, the byte offsets for the communications to happen. You can also define the way in which topics are shared uh, uh, periodically or just one-offs in either direction. The operating system build system is basically Nix, uh, standardized Nix for development, basically running NixOS rebuild switch, and then customized NixOS production that I'll talk about later. <coughs> and, <coughs> to be, and then we have finally have the audio graph, and that's written in SICK, which is a very kind of nice new, uh, new school C style language that's written by a music DSP expert that doesn't have to know about anything of this system here. He just writes it on his MacBook. He uses all the tools of the trade there. And then by, by, by using the SICK build system, it automatically works well. Uh, and you can, all, you can develop this all in, in isolation. So the front panel is developed by a firmware guy. The operating system and build system is written by a kernel guy or an XOS guy, audiograph, so on and so forth. So it gives us this isolation because it's very hard to be a single, a single man team doing all of it, right? The infrastructure that we use, we use Flakes to define basically everything, all the development machines, builders, checks for everything. We happen to use Blueprint because it's like Flakes with crayons, very easy. Build button next for the CI. It means that like most of the time when we're doing small changes, we run it, you know, we have a master uh, builder and then some, uh, some uh, uh, builders, for example, x86 and then Arch64 for both Darwin and, and Linux. And that, this kind of orchestrates this. And it works really well with a binary CAS, also like a very small team, and we should just have it in-house, so it's very um, uh, easy. We use Tailscale to have the networking all set up, so it also manages like SSH keys between builders, for example, which is very nice and GitHub Actions for like one of things like KiCat Gerbers. And this is our infrastructure. <laughs> you don't need a lot. Yeah, and you can see all the tools that we're using there as well. <laughs> uh, so workflows, uh, hardware workflow. We have an extremely talented uh, audio um, hardware guy that lives in Sweden. He hacks on the schematics in PCB. He works for a while, pushes on main, tags a kit branch, CI passes, the production files are then automatically generated. CEI is like electrical and design requirements checks that are run inside, um, are run from KiCad <coughs> in the CI. So make sure that like all the, the traces are not clo close, like overlapping, or the VS are like not too close to each other and some other, like, all pins must be connected, etc. Then we order PCPs from the factory, and we keep on hacking. And this is Henrik working on the previous uh, iteration of Katla. Then, for the development workflow, um, um, so when working with the device itself, you're usually just hacking on a feature, you do an XOS rebuild switch, you observe and debug uh, on the board, and just an XOS rebuild switch, and then you can deploy it to a deploy user that's running on the CM5. And the CM5 is 
uh, just there's no vendor lock-in, it's just mainline Linux, so it's very easy and nice to work with. And that's basically my audio DSP guy actually has Axel open. Axel is one of the programs that we use to build the perfect curves for everything. So we have like, I don't know how many different curves for all the parameters to make it really feel and, and work, very, work nice together. That's this, these Excel, Excel files are just binary formats that are then baked into the final binary as lookup tables. Uh, so for the production workflow of actually generating the flash, the image that will be uh, uh, put on the device itself, you hack on the OS kernel and bootloader using Nix, then you build an ARM image on a beefy R64 uh, builder, it takes a couple of minutes from scratch, as opposed to like tens of minutes with other with, with something that I've used in the past. Um, then you just flash that via Muscrum, and usually this is the bottleneck flashing, not the building, which is kind of crazy, um, because the CM5 uh, on a, on a kind of comparatively, the builder is like five to 10 times more beefier than the CM5, so it's very nice to have this kind of layer where you can just build stuff on a beefy machine and then just shape it over the network. And then, uh, then you observe and debug, and then you hack on kernel, blah, 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 blah. And this is uh, <laughs> Adam and Matt uh, in this process. I think we should give, they're in the room, I think we should give them a hand of applause. <laughs> There was definitely, there was no fear in this hacking, as you can see. <laughs> only joy. Uh, only joy, yeah. And then, for this production, uh, customized NixOS, uh, basically, we want basically nothing from NixOS, or almost nothing. We don't want the Nix daemon, we don't want XSS, we don't want networking, no Perl pass, we just want to have the as sim as smallest NixOS possible. Uh, we don't need any file system, all the state is stored on the small 256K uh, front panel, which makes, you know, managing a file system very simple. We can leverage VM tests, uh, and Matt wrote really, a really clever VM test that just basically runs audio on a very limited VM to make sure that like, all the services are correctly set up and all the parameters are correctly configured. And that will like, catch obvious bugs in CI, like buffer underruns, misconfiguration of the OS, etc. And we use a very tiny U-boot. We don't need a whole lot. We don't need any fast boot or we don't need any like, like almost nothing, because it's meant to be like a device that sits on a user table, not connected to the internet. And uh, the OS is in the order of megabytes. I think we got it down to 40 megabytes, and I think there's still a lot to go. Boot time is in the order of seconds. I think it's like five or six seconds right now. And the power is on the order of watts that we have, which is kind of crazy, and I think that's would be very hard to do without something like Nix to kind of lead, like to be like the scaffolding of uh, all this development. Yeah, and this is champagne in jars. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta celebrate. Um, last, but I would, I would like to talk about the user updating process for this device. I know you can do like sys update uh, or sys uh, system repart, these kind of things, combine them together. But in our case, it's just very simple because it don't have a file system. All the state is stored somewhere else. Uh, user press like an upload device on like a web page or something, and then, this, then that will send a command to our, our, our host and put, putting the device into mask remote, it boots back up, this, this, the code running on the user's device will uh, acknowledge that and flash the new image over OTG. So just very simple operation. They always boot, queries the front panel for versioning, and update it via DFU till if needed. So these are just all, like we have a USB DFU bootloader on the front panel that just automatically, you know, will update it uh, with AP partitioning if something fails. And then Katla has been added it. It's really simple, don't you think? Um, what am I gonna talk about? Yeah. Uh, I want to kind of uh, leave you, uh, this has been a whirlwind tour of Embedded Linux. I know there might be some questions, but I wanna leave you with this um, quote that I think is really beautiful. And it's uh, uh, ab uh, absolutely unmixed attention is prayer. And I think that's a really beautiful quote by, a, by a, an author uh, named uh, Simon Wheel in her uh, essay, Attention and Will. It's a really beautiful essay if you want to read it. But I would leave, like to leave you with another quote. Fearless hacking is prayer. Basically, when you're in the zone and you're grinding and you're just tackling the obstacles, it really feels like a spiritual um, experience. And I think that's what we all strive for here in the Nix community. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you very much.
for the great talk and the exercise. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, thanks for the talk. Really cool to see this project. Uh, on the audio hardware side, what makes this uh, project interesting as opposed to doing a VST with all the custom curves that you do? So any fancy distortions or something like that that you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in the like the the audio uh, like the audio like the the distortion here is like uh, uh, this is a, a prototype board, but the newest distortion is using like a really fancy X, XMOS. Uh, distortion that just sounds wonderful, and I think like for what what we wanted to do is to try to combine the analog and the digital in a way that makes sense and that way that kind of sounds beautiful and leverages both because we wanted to make a physical product, um, and I think we've uh, we've done a pretty great job at that. And we have a prototype out by the clan booth, a numtype booth. If you want to try it out, it's actually running NixOS. You can SSH into it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hey, great talk. I was wondering, when you have this in production, how do you like distribute firmware updates to, to the clients? Yeah, yeah, no, that's the, the, just with, uh, with a, a website and just using, you know, the web USB. Yeah, yeah, very, just very simple. And then there, we, we, we have, a, like, there's arcade develop tools is what Rockchip uses. We just create a, a, a WASM version of that and, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask, usually with ARM stuff, because mm -hmm. there's no UEFI, you've got to do some yeah. sort of device tree hacking yeah. to boot NixOS on it. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you had to do that here to get NixOS running on that ARM board, and if you did, honestly, what ARM board it is, <laughs> so I can use it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think Matt is probably better to, to answer that. Yeah. Uh, the answer is uh, this locally got mainlined, the device tree for this ball got mainlined right on time. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So we prayed and uh, were uh, and, and uh, were received with his beautiful device tree. <laughs> so any more questions? Not so far. Check out the prototype and give him a big round of applause for the great yeah. work and the team. Thank you.